HTML5 provides a simple and powerful feature for embedding audio files in your web pages. Let's make a working copy of audio.html, and I'm just going to rename this to audio-working.html. Open this in my text editor, and I'm also going to open it in a browser. There's our Firefox browser. You can see there's our little audio file. And we'll go ahead and open this also in Chrome, so you can see that one. And there's our audio file. Now, here in our HTML file, you see we have a little bit of JavaScript here at the top. We'll get back to that. And then the rest of the file is really very simple. There's our header, there's our audio, and there's a little form with the buttons at the bottom, and we'll show you those a little bit later as well. The first thing I want you to notice about this is that this audio control here, we have an audio container and it contains these source tags. And each of these source tags refers to a different file with a different media type. And so we have an AAC file, we have an MPEG file, and we have an AUG Vorbis file. And so those are three different encodings of the same media. And the reason for that is that different browsers support different encodings. And so, for example, this Firefox browser, if we come up here to the Tools menu and go into Web Developer and Web Console, we see that it failed to load the AAC or the MPEG, the M4A or the MP3 files. And those were the first two. And so what it did load is the AUG file. If we come back here up to the Tools menu and go to Page Info and come over here to Media, you see that song.aug got loaded. And here's the preview of it. We can close this and we can close this and let's look at the same effect here in Chrome. In Chrome, we can go in the view developer and developer tools and we can see under resources, we click on the resources tab, you know, it usually comes up at first under console, but if you click on the resources tab and under frames and audio working.html, that's our file there, you see in this XHR song.mp3, that's the one that got loaded. And so if we come back over here into our source file, you see that that's the second one. So it wasn't able to load the AAC, and instead it loaded the MP3 file. And this is without any JavaScript or anything, it's just loading that. These controls that you see on the screen, this here, or in Firefox, this here, this is enabled with this controls attribute. And if I take that out and save it and reload it, you see there's no control anymore. And so the only way to control it in that case is with JavaScript. And so I provided a few buttons here. Let's go over and see this in Chrome. We have the same effect. I'll reload this. You see the controls are gone. And so we just have these buttons. And these are the buttons here. And you see on click, play, pause, and rewind. And up here in our JavaScript, these are really simple. Play, pause, and rewind just sets the current time to zero. And so this audio element is just loaded with document get element by ID with the ID and audio one is the ID that we set over here in the audio tag. And so once that's loaded, all you have to do is call play, pause, or set the current time to zero on that object. And there's actually quite a few different things that you can do with it. And so you can create your own buttons and make this all fit with the look of your website and these buttons just work. And it works exactly the same in Firefox. So there's a couple of other attributes. There's an autoplay attribute. If I save that and load this back up and reload in the browser, you see it just starts playing. You put the controls back on. There's also a loop attribute. If I save that and reload this, I'm going to drag this out towards the end of the song here. You see it just starts back at the beginning. So you cannot style this controller with CSS, but you can leave off the controls attribute and create a custom audio player using 
JavaScript, and whatever other elements fit in with the design of your site. Of course, you can make much more sophisticated controls, and you've probably seen examples of that around the internet. By providing a selection of different encodings in the source tags, it's possible to support all of the modern browsers with your audio media.